Okay, so it is uh, June the 3rd and um, I am going to begin the process of hardening off my plants uh, but I thought I would just show you what they look like down here. Um, and I don't know if I really want to start going through uh, a listing of what all the plants are because after about a week or so and I have them all hardened off then I'll be planting them and then I'll let you know exactly what I've got. Just uh, thought that I should make a little recording just to show you how the plants have been looking recently. Um, I actually uh, have not given them as much in the way of fertilizer this year as I have in the past. Uh, last year they all went crazy and uh, and they were all in distress pretty well. Uh, so I thought I would just kind of tone it down a little bit and, uh, and, and uh, try to keep them from getting too big too fast and uh, I, I think I've mostly accomplished that so anyway that's what they look like right now and um, and I'll stop I'll work on them a little bit and uh, then I'll show you what I've done okay just one uh, one more quick thing before I move on my son said dad why don't you ever show these plants uh, that you have up here and I uh, have a little table set up here just have a small uh, picture window it doesn't get much Sun uh, actually, so I don't really have a great setup for bringing plants in uh, during the winter um, to put them into like natural sunlight, uh, but I do have room for two plants and I cut them right down to about maybe a foot in height uh, and um, they start to grow again and um, I cut them down again uh, probably uh, two months ago, cut them right down again and they're pretty big again so they are <clears throat> they're up against the window and of course they're doing their darndest to find the light and I have some seven pots on them um, this one and there's a bigger one too oh over here and then there's another one over here so uh, these two plants never actually gave me any peppers last year so I thought oh you guys owe me something yeah. so I uh, dug them up and I uh, potted them up and I brought them in and um, see I'll be bringing them all outside today now and uh, just kind of putting them into a shady area so that they don't um, uh, go into shock from the sun. That's it, just letting you see them and um, I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay so uh, I've gotten all the plants out. This is of course where the plants are going to be uh, in another week or so. Um, here's my, here are my grape plants over here and um, this is a deck that we built a few years ago so uh, what I've done is I brought all of the plants outside uh, here are the two uh, seven pods that I overwintered that I was just showing you and I have all the other plants piled up behind the deck and just in front here and we have the gazebo set up which kind of uh, shields uh, which will shield the plants from the sun for the first couple of days and it is supposed to go up into the uh, into, uh, into the 30s in a couple of days so it's going to be pretty hot for them so I'm going to keep them protected and gradually bring them out but I work so I can't be here fussing with them so I've just brought them out and I've lined them all up I'll have the, the uh, little couch um, pushed back to provide them a little bit more uh, security and it's supposed to be it's very calm right now and it's supposed to stay this way um, I have quite a quite a nice uh, amount of sunlight sun comes up in the morning right there it goes right across the sky it's all clear and I get about eight to ten hours maybe even more of light right in this area here and of course for quite a lot of the time it does shine down right in this area so what I'll be doing is every few days I'll, um, I'll move the plants, I'll bring them a little bit forward just to give them uh, a little bit of exposure to the sun without killing them. <laughs> of course I wouldn't kill them but um, in the past I have uh, put them right out and they do get sunburnt. If you look at my uh, earlier videos you'll see that's normally what I do and, um, and they do get sunburnt and the, those leaves usually fall off but uh, the plants uh, do bounce back in a couple of weeks. I'm really going to try this year 
to do it in a gradual enough way. I'm going to harden them off properly and uh, then I'll lose no time at all. So that's my goal and hopefully it'll work and, and uh, in a week I'll, plant, I'll put all the plants in here and then I'll do another video and um, I'll let you know exactly what I have. I have about 10 plants that I'm going to be giving away to uh, co-workers and friends and uh, the rest are all going to get planted. And um, that's it. Okay, so it's um, <clears throat> Thursday evening and it's been uh, swelteringly hot. I've, I've uh, managed to bring all the plants out and I had them out a little bit further than this. But um, uh, according to the weather forecast, there's supposed to be a huge thunderstorm coming our way with hail and damaging winds and that could actually last for a couple of days. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm, uh, I've uh, got them protected a little bit in the screened in area here. Uh, hold, held down with bricks. I'm just going to watch and make sure that uh, that uh, everything's okay with them. Um, I mean, I have to. I want to protect them, but at the same time, I want them to experience the wind. <laughs> but I'll see what happens, and I'll come out even in the storm to uh, to protect them if I have to, just the way anybody would after spending months and months getting his plants to this point. But here they all are. And another another uh, couple days, um, actually tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, I'm planning on getting them into the garden. So um, yeah, they've been they've been exposed a little bit to the sun a little bit more every day, and uh, they seem to be doing pretty well with that. So anyway, that's it. I've got them protected inside the gazebo, and we'll see what ends up happening. Okay, so it is um, Sunday, June the 10th today. And uh, I managed to get all of my pepper plants out in the garden yesterday, but it was kind of an off and on stormy, rainy day. And today's kind of the same thing, kind of ugh, blue actually, but it's kind of a gray, dismal. And I could feel some uh, drops, so I think it's probably going to start to rain again. But I figured, well, I want to do this video and uh, show you what I've got out in the garden here, so I better get cracking on it. So I do have, um, I do have, um, eight seven pod plants. These two here uh, were in the garden last year and gave me no peppers at all. They're the ones that I just showed you um, and they, that I had overwintered. Uh, and they, they have some peppers on them already. Um, they also have some kind of yellowish looking leaves so I don't think they got quite enough sun but we'll see what happens with that. Um, the others are quite nice. This one and this one. Um, and then this one over here, this one here. And this one over here, I don't know if you could tell, they all kind of look very variegated. And this one over here it doesn't even look like a seven pod, but it started off looking like one. And then um, I cut it down as an experiment to see if it would come back up bushy, like everybody says. And uh, this is what ended up happening. So it has some flowers on it, it's kind of a small plant. I, I doubt anything's going to really happen, but I figured, well, I would just give it a shot and see. So. There it is. Um, and of course, seven pods are uh, a great pepper. They're one of my favorites. They're about 750,000 Scoville units. If you know what uh, that is, it's uh, actually very hot. Uh, but it's more than hot. It's a really uh, very sweet and uh, strong flavor. Really nice pepper. Then I have a pepper I've never grown before. It's an Italian strain called the Zeno. And uh, what a nice looking plant. I mean, um, outside of you know, a few little blemishes on the leaves. The plant itself is bushy and nice, and um, it's an annuum. I, I don't really know what the Scoville units will be for the peppers. I know they're small, upright peppers. They're probably going to be in, the, in an ambiguous, uh, subjective scale, not the Scoville scale. They get a nine. And that's about all I can find on them. There's not an awful lot about them on the internet. So, I don't know, nine. It's probably about 150,000 Scoville units. I'm going to take a guess. But um, always interesting to grow something new and see what happens with that. Uh, then my second attempt at growing uh, Peter Yellow, which uh, is not a hot pepper by any means. It is um, just for the uh, uniqueness of the strange-shaped, phallic-shaped uh, peppers, which uh, I think might be funny if it ever happens. 
And there are about 20,000 Scoville units, 20 to 60,000, I, I think it is. Um, another plant that I have never grown before is a, is a plant from Peru called the Peruviano Arancio. And uh, that's about 200,000 Scoville units. Um, it's a fairly nice looking plant. I mean, uh, it's, it's, um, the leaves have curled a little bit down at the bottom, but the leaves at the top are looking nice. And uh, then, of course, I have two uh, yellow Fatali plants. Um, nope. Didn't notice that leaf. They're fairly small, and they don't get to be very big. So I know they're going to do just fine down here. Um, I like Fatali. Most people do who, who try them. They're fruity kind of. Um, pepper. They have a nice heat, maybe 250,000 Scoville units. Um, then here's a shout out to T. Mutter, uh, Todd, who sent me uh, some mar marugas and some butch tea peppers and I harvested the seeds and I managed to grow two of each and uh, they're nice looking plants that's for sure. The um, butch tea was the uh, winner for a short time of the hottest pepper in the world at about 1.4 million Scoville units but it was a fairly short uh, short rain. Um, they're really nice, they've got some flowers on them already and the Maruga I believe is now the present um, record holder at about 2 million Scoville units. They're both strains of the Trinidad Scorpion um, pepper. So Trinidad Scorpion, just, in a, just on its own, is about as hot as a seven pot. I've grown them before, and uh, they're interesting peppers to grow. Uh, they're very similar to the seven pod. I don't think that they have as nice a flavor as a Trinidad Scorpion. Now these, uh, these peppers here, uh, I'm really looking forward to. It was very exciting for me to grow such hot peppers, and uh, I'll see what ends up happening with them. Um, anyway, thank you very much, Todd, for sending those to me. I really appreciate that. And um, I have uh, three hot paper lantern plants. This one over here and over here. And then the small one, smaller one in front here. And uh, I've always liked the hot paper lantern. They're a very good uh, pepper for growing in northern regions because I'm in Canada. And, um, you know, it's really nice that, that they start to they grow pretty quickly. Um, peppers come out there, usually by mid-July I'm already harvesting them. They just ripen so fast, it's perfect. A lot of the other peppers won't ripen until maybe uh, August or even the beginning of September, but I could count on the hot paper lanterns all summer basically from middle of July on because they are so prolific. They have hundreds of peppers on them. If you watch my prior videos, you'll see that I always do talk about them. They're just a great pepper. They taste great. They're very habanero-like in flavor, but they're, they're uh, kind of elongated. They look like nagas, like smooth nagas is what they look like. Um, they've got a great flavor. They have a nice heat at about maybe 200 to 300,000 Scoville units, something in there. And uh, I'm actually not pointing at them. I'm just talking. Um, the red scotch bonnet, I know that's always grown to be a pretty big plant, but I had so many tall plants this year that I had to start figuring out what I was going to do uh, because I can't have all the plants in the back, in the back row. So uh, I've got a, the red scotch bonnet and I'm going to try to keep it uh, from getting too big. But I easily get 150 uh, peppers on it. They're small. Um, Again, habanero like in flavor and uh, really nice, really nice sweet pepper. Uh, hot, quick heat, really good, very nice. Now, um, uh, One Million Scoville Club sent me uh, some dattle seeds and I managed to grow three dattle plants, uh, pardon me, five dattle plants, not three. And I've, I've kept two of them. And the one thing that I, I do want to say, I'm not too sure how this happened or why, but out of all the plants, they all, all five of these uh, dato plants wound up with, with kind of uh, yellow spots on the leaves. Not all the leaves, I mean some of the leaves are quite nice and fine, but the ones on the top. So whether they just need more light than the other plants, I don't know. But in any case, here they are. They're very strong, nice looking plants. Now the dattle is, I don't think, as well known um, as some other peppers. But in St. Augustine, Florida, I think it's about the only pepper that everybody always talks about. So there's a lot, if you look it up, 
you'll see that there's a lot about it all in Florida. So uh, it's a little bit of a mystery where they originated, but that's where they are from now. So again, uh, One Million Scoville Club, thank you so much for sending me those seeds. I'm excited about them. And again, I know they're supposed to grow to be like five feet tall, but I kind of, I'm just going to have to keep an eye on them and make sure they don't get bigger than the plants behind, because that's not going to work out for me. And if I keep cut them, if I cut them down, they'll probably just give me more flowers and more peppers. They're not trees. It gets cold here. I only have so much time to grow them anyway, so I guess that's really all that, that I can say about that. Um, I have a ring of fire in the back. It's um, you know a nice strong looking plant. I've already got some uh, peppers on it. I'll show. It uh, started giving me peppers while it was downstairs. Uh, the leaves are a little bit curled, but um, I'm just going to you know, hope that everything works out okay for them, for, for this particular plant. Um, the, uh, they're kind of cayenne-like, uh, nice heat as well. I didn't really like the flavor very much, but you know, I grew it, so here it is, and I'll see what I can do with it. Um, and another one from last year I really liked was the Pereira. I'd never heard of it before last year. I grew it last year, it was very good, I liked it a lot, and so I decided to grow it again. And here it is, you know, another, uh, another nice pepper. There it is, okay. Now the rest of these are all Nagas, and I have nine Naga plants. So, Nagas of course are just over a million, maybe a million and 36,000 Scoville units. Uh, not a record holder, but certainly a fantastic pepper. Last year I had hundreds of peppers, hundreds of them. Uh, every plant gave me, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 uh, pods and uh, they're just a great pepper. They taste great, they're extremely hot, they work great for dehydrating, and um, you know, like I dehydrate most of the peppers by the end of the year, and then I make myself a nice little uh, blend, and, um, and it's the Nagas and the Seven Pods that mostly provide the flavoring for uh, those peppers. So anyway, I have um, 34 plants out here, and uh, I'm, Actually, uh, very happy with the uh, with the varieties. I'm happy with the way the plants came out and the way they looked. Like I, um, I mentioned earlier, I was a little bit more touchy about uh, fertilizing the plants because last year I fertilized them quite regularly. They got huge. The root systems developed un enormously. By the time that I got them into the ground, they were root bound and um, they kind of, uh, it, it took them a while before they started to come around again. So I have to be conscious of that. The pots are only eight inches big and I don't really have room for bigger pots than that. So it makes sense for me to, to give very little fertilizer, to let them just kind of grow naturally, uh, except when it looks like they need the fertilizer, and just let the root system uh, grow at a good pace. And this year, that's, I'll say that that's exactly what ended up happening. Those, um, those roots were nice. They weren't, uh, they weren't overly um, uh, you know, wound around and around. They just were not root bound. So, my hope is that and the fact that I, that I hardened them off for a week and I think that worked out pretty well. I'm hoping that they don't go to shock like they usually do. They look pretty good right now. So I think that's probably going to uh, work out pretty well. And I'll just show you that I had some extra plants here. I have two others that are in the house. Um, I have a poinsettia plant and, um, and a chupatino that I grew for, um, for a couple friends as house plants and uh, they're in the window right now until I could get them to them. They're very nice looking plants as well. But I have a couple nagas, I have a seven pod, uh, there's a ring of fire over here, um, a fatale, uh, you know, so altogether I have eight plants sitting here and uh, my wife's going to take a couple of them to friends of hers and I have uh, people that have asked for them and, um, and there's a neighbor who who um, I gave a uh, Naga to. So I grow 45 plants, I don't have room for them all. In the end, I, uh, I managed to, to give them away. So anyway, that's it, that's, that's the start of my year. I'll probably do another update 
in August. I really appreciate your support. Thank you very much for watching this video to the bitter end and all my videos. You know, I just really appreciate it. Really enjoy interacting with everybody. So please subscribe. I love that. And, um, and uh, I love interacting with everybody. Leave a comment. Send me a message. I'm always happy to give whatever advice I could give and to meet everybody to, you know, to learn about you and to give you whatever advice I can. Thank you so much. I really, uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.